Hi quilters! Today's tutorial will guide you through making a cover for a 5.5 by 8.5 1 inch thick standard 3 ring binder. It's the perfect size to store your patterns from the All Iowa Shop Hop. We're going to start with the cutting. For the cover, you're going to need a piece that is approximately 11 inches by 18 inches. After it's quilted, we'll cut it down to the actual size it will be in the finished project. For the front inside cover and the back inside cover, you're going to start with a 10 inch strip of fabric. From the 10 inch strip of fabric, you're going to cut one piece that's 10 inches by 12 inches and one piece that is 10 inches by 14 inches. For my three ring binder cover, I'm using fabric from the All Iowa Shop Hop line. At the end of the video, I will show you three other covers that I made, all using the All Iowa Shop Hop fabric. From the pocket fabric, Cut two squares that are 5 inches by 5 inches. From the lining fabric, cut one piece that is 10 inches by 17 inches. All of the fabrics that I'm using, except for the trees, are toss prints that are non-directional. You may want to watch the video all the way through before cutting if you're using a directional print. Whenever I'm using two rulers to help me get the right cut, I always make sure to double check it and count it twice so I'm cutting at the right place. All the fabrics are cut, now we need to cut some interfacing pieces. We need one piece that is 10 inches by 7 inches and one piece that is 10 inches by 6 inches. This is Decor Bond and it's a fusible interfacing. It has a little bit of stiffness to it so it's a little bit heavier duty. You also need a piece of batting that is approximately 11 inches by 18 inches. I didn't have a big enough piece. I'm using some leftover warm and natural from a quilt. So I just pieced two smaller pieces together. I'm using a zigzag stitch, butting them up next to each other and zigzagging them together. Once it's quilted into the project, no one will know that it was pieced together. The next thing to do is to layer the cover fabric with the batting and quilt it. You don't need to have a third layer underneath there, but I have a little trick up my sleeve to get some easy quilting done. On one side of the batting, I am going to put some fusible grid in place to help me with my quilting. This will be on the side opposite the cover fabric. I'm going to fuse that right to the batting and get it in place. I'm using the 2 inch finished grid and this piece is approximately 12 by 20. Once the grid is fused in place, I'm going to flip the whole thing over and I'm going to use a little 505 spray to base the cover fabric to the batting. While I've got the iron in place, I'm going to get the front inside cover and the back inside cover ready to go. I'm going to put the 10 inch by 6 inch piece on the 10 inch by 12 inch back inside cover. I'm going to fuse it to the wrong side. For this back inside cover, make sure you're fusing the interfacing to the left side. Once the interfacing is in place, you want to fold the fabric over and give it a nice pressing. On the wrong side of the front inside cover, the 10 inch by 14 inch piece, you're going to put the interfacing 7 inches by 10 inches, fuse it to the right side of that rectangle. 
Once the interfacing is in place, fold the fabric over and press. Now it's time to get the pocket ready to go. Put the two pieces that are five inches by five inches, right sides together. If it's a directional print, make sure you pay attention to that. You're going to leave an opening on one side, but you're gonna sew all the way around, except for the opening. I usually do some back stitching at the beginning and the end of the opening, and then at all four of the corners. Once you've sewn all the way around, you wanna clip all four of the corners to reduce bulk. Get as close as you can to that corner stitching, just don't go through it. After you've clipped the corners, you wanna turn the whole thing right side out and then make sure you poke the corners out so they're nice and crisp. Don't worry about the opening, that will get sewn shut later. You just need to make sure that you get the corners poked out and then press it nice and flat. Now it's time to quilt. Since I'm going to be following the grid, I'm going to put my walking foot on and then I'm going to be using some variegated thread for some added interest. I'm going to start by just going around the edge, just like an eighth of an inch from the edge all the way around from the front. So I've got the cover fabric facing up on the batting and I'm going to go all the way around. Once I flip it over to quilt it from the grid side, this just gives me a marking to follow so that I know I'm quilting all the way on the cover fabric. I'm using the variegated thread in both the bobbin and on the top thread. I'm just going to sew on the lines in both directions and I will actually sew from one line to the other line so I don't have to break the thread and have threads hanging out all over. So I just keep sewing. Sew from one line to the other. Once I've sewn all the lines in one direction, I'm gonna flip it around and I'm gonna start sewing the lines in the other direction. When I got done with the quilting or I had just one line going both directions, I thought it needed something a little bit extra. So what I decided to do was to sew a second line next to each of the lines that were there to begin with. So I just sewed right next to the first line, about an eighth to a quarter inch away from the first line and just did all of the lines a second time. If you wanted to, this would be a fun place to put in some decorative stitches. If you wanna quilt this in a different sort of style, you could do stippling or loops, or if you have a machine that does quilting, blocks, that kind of thing, this would be a great way to use that. I'm very happy with my decision to sew two lines on the grid instead of just one. I think it turned out a lot nicer and I really like the look of it. Now that this section is quilted, it is time to trim it down to the size we need, which is 10 inches by 17 inches. Before we can put the whole thing together, it's time to add the pocket to the front inside cover. On the side that has the interfacing, center the pocket one and a quarter inch up from the bottom and one and a quarter inch from the left side and sew it down on the left, bottom, and right sides. Make sure one of the sides you sew down is the one that has the opening we use to turn it right side out. Just sew close to the edge on three sides. 
I did backstitch at the beginning and at the end. If you wanted to, you could just leave this as one big pocket. I'm going to add a few lines of sewing in to make spaces for pens. They're about 1 and 3 eighths inch away from either side. I'm going to mark these lines, sew it from the wrong side, and I will backstitch a little bit at the beginning and the end of the stitching. Now it's time to put the whole thing together. We're going to start with the lining. We're going to put that right side up on our table. Next, we're going to add the front inside cover, the part with the pocket on the left side, and then we're going to have the back inside cover on the right side. Make sure all the raw edges are together. The folds should be in the center of this unit. I'm going to pin all these layers together before I add the next step, just to keep everything from shifting. Once I have it pinned, I'm going to put the cover piece right side down. So I've kind of just made a sandwich. I have the cover right side down. Everything else was right side up. And I'm going to pin these layers together. Now using a quarter inch seam, I'm going to sew three of the sides, both of the long ones and one of the short sides. I'm going to backstitch at the start of the seam and at each of the corners. If you want to keep all the layers together a little bit better, you could go back and zigzag this, get an open toe foot, and then zigzag these edges. Or if you have a serger, just go ahead and serge it. Before you turn it right side out, you need to clip those two corners that we sewed where the short edges meet the long edges. Just clip those out so there's a little less bulk. Now it's time to flip the whole thing right side out. As you pull it right side out, you're going to try to get those corners to box out and be as square as you can. I just kind of had to keep wiggling it to get everything to lay flat. Okay, we have one last seam to do, but before we do that, we're going to press it so it lays nice and flat. Now we have just one seam left to sew. Before we sew it, we're going to flick this back inside cover to the front cover. Once you flip the back cover to the other side, you want to again press it, make sure it's going to lay nice and flat. 
I didn't press it, but I did add a few pins just to make sure it was going to lay flat. And then using a quarter inch seam allowance, you're going to sew that last side of the project. I did do a little back stitching at the beginning and the end. Now before we turn this last piece right side out, you want to clip these corners to reduce bulk. Now it's time to flip the back inside cover back to the other side so both the front inside cover and back inside cover are on the same side. Try to get those last few corners to be as square as you can and then give it one last pressing before we try to put the binder inside the cover. To insert the binder into the cover, fold the cover in half so you can see the pockets made by the inside covers, flip the binder pocket sides out, and slip it into place. You have to work on both the front and back at the same time. Flip it right side out and you're done! Now all you have to do is open the clips for the binder and put your papers in place. The patterns already have the holes in there for the three ring binder. The patterns are also cut to the size of five and a half by eight and a half, so they would fit into these clear plastic envelope sheet protectors that also have holes to fit in the three ring binder. I picked up my three ring binder at an office supply store and other fun things that they had available that fit inside these three ring binders are plastic dividers that you could use to separate out your patterns from each other like by region or by style. They also had a couple different kinds of paper for these. You can get regular college lined paper, filler paper for taking notes, or you can get grid paper which is great for quilters because you can use it to help you color in blocks and keep track of things and maybe how you want to put things together. I just thought these three ring binders were really handy for quilters. Everything a quilter would need to keep things organized. The pocket in front is a great place to store pencils, pens, and colored pencils. My favorite thing that I found at the office supply store was a gusseted binder pocket. It has a 200 sheet capacity, so they made it to use to hold paper, but I think it'd be a great place to hold pencils and or erasers or anything else you might need for your quilting. The pocket would actually make a great place to put little fabric scraps or little blocks that you need to match and then it just closes shut with this little piece of Velcro. And of course I couldn't just make one because they turned out so cute. This one I made using some of the selvage edges from the All Iowa Shop Hop fabric and then I found a few other selvages that looked cute with it and put them all together to make the front for this cover. I made a slightly larger pocket on this one. I started with 6 inch squares instead of 5 inch squares but I made it the same way. For another version I decided I wanted to cut apart the panel and use that to make part of the cover. So instead of using the panel traditionally in like a quilt, I just cut it apart and put it on my binder. When you open it up, you see the whole thing and I even managed to fit the word Iowa on the back cover. I think this is a fun way to use a panel. I just used some crosshatch quilting to finish this one off. I made this one without the pocket on the inside cover. And since I'd already cut up a panel, I decided to use the rest of it to make another. We hope you enjoyed our binder cover tutorial. We hope you remembered to hit the like button, to leave us a comment and tell us what you think, to share with your quilting friends, and subscribe so that you don't miss any of our future tutorials. Thanks for watching and happy quilting!